Hi, I'm Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take. Joining us right now, uh, love his insights uh, and his stories on CBS Sports. He also does a great job uh, from a social media perspective, dropping really good, knowledgeable nuggets for you to take in uh, on a lot of different ways. But he is the one and only Jeff Carr. Jeff, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Hey, thanks, Rob. By the way, I think it's, what, 43 days till pitchers and catchers report? Yes, but who's counting? Actually, it's, I think it's – yeah, you're right, Jeff. I think that's right. <laughs> nice. Good. I, I like I'm that. one of those people, Rob. I, I don't miss a day of baseball season, so I, I, I had to point that out. I love it. Jeff Thank is you. always Thank the numbers you. guy. Jeff is the numbers yes. guy, man. He, he and, has and, every and, number and down back, man. Sixers are off to a uh, you know a, a, a 23 and 10 start. So there you go. We're looking for positives here. Um, Jeff, I'll ask you a simple question. How did we get here? How did we get here with this Eagles team? Man. You know what, Rob? It was brewing, um, even when they were 10-1. and 1. And I keep saying this. when These guys claim they don't hear the outside noise. They do. They're not any good. They're not as good as the 49ers. They're not as good as the Cowboys. Yeah, they're 10-1, and 1, but their point differential is this. It, it does add on. Like, oh, they're escaping with wins. They're not better than this team. They're not better than this team. When I, I'm the guy who said, well, wait a minute. They're 5-1 and 1 against teams – you know, against winning records. Doesn't that mean something? It, it matters about winning, but then it started, okay, we're not winning by this much. What's wrong here? And then they get blown out by the 49ers and they just let them kick them in the teeth. Like I, me personally, like, again, I never was an NFL player, never will be. I'd love to talk to like guys like Barrett Brooks, Brian Baldinger about this, but when you have a team that talks as much trash as the 49ers do and you beat them badly last year, wouldn't you want to go do that again? It, yeah. it, it oh, yeah. just it just seemed like they had no interest in doing that. Then they let Dallas just walk all over them. And they, look, I get it. Dallas had ten days off. San Francisco had ten days off. But they just kind of let that boil over. And then the Seattle thing happened. And you're like, okay, now things are starting to come out. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, guys on offense are pissed off. Uh, guys on the defense are wondering why can't they get this thing fixed. You know, they you know, all, all year a lot of players complained about Sean Desai. Well, okay, Sean Desai's gone. Now you got Matt Patricia. So now what? And now Matt Patricia's throwing everybody everywhere. Hassan Reddick's back in coverage. We all learned, like, that That doesn't work. So then you barely beat the Giants. You should have crushed the Giants. And, and again, I actually thought they played well that game. But I like go in the locker room. I know it's Christmas time, Rob. It felt like a funeral. Mm. Like, what's the matter with you guys? You just won a game for the first time in five weeks. Like, shouldn't you be happy about that? Nope. They're, they're upset. Guys didn't want to talk. You're like, okay. And then the guys that did talk, they, they said stuff you probably don't want to hear. Mm. If you're covering the team, if you're on the team, you, you don't want to hear that stuff. So then they lose to the Cardinals, and and everything just went haywire. And now, now we're where we are. This feels like the 96 Eagles, Rob. I know you know about them. I we're, remember it very well, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was the, the end of Cotite. Yeah, I, yeah. Let, me, let me real quick tone. Let me just follow up with something Jeff said. There are a lot of people that feel like, the Niners game broke them, for lack of a better term. Do you buy that or you just, like you said, this was coming for so long, it was going to happen eventually? But it feels like that was like, if, you, if you're looking for, almost like you knew the Phillies' run was over from 7 to 11 when Howard tore his Achilles. Like, was this the game that was just like, that season's over? I think this was the game that you couldn't hide the problems anymore. We knew okay. they were, We knew they were bad. In the secondary, you knew it was the personnel. You knew they didn't have the linebackers. You knew James Bradbury was struggling. You knew Kevin Byer wasn't exactly what you traded for, and it all showed against an elite football team, a, a team that will probably represent the NFC in the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, we're not as good as them, but I, I still was like, okay, you can still control your own destiny. Like, and I said for weeks, as long as you take care of business in your last four games. I don't care if you win or lose to Dallas. It doesn't mean anything. Well, they didn't take care of business their last four games. They're, they're one and two in their last right. three. So now everything's just spiraling out of control. And look, like you said, Rob, they may win a playoff game. I, I, I will say this. I think this team can really win this fan base back if they win a playoff game, if they go to Dallas and beat them, when Dallas is clearly better than them. You go in there and beat the Cowboys at home and prevent them from going to an NFC Championship game again. I think that makes up for a lot of pain for this season. And I don't think it matters 
if they go to the Super Bowl or not. Now, of course, everybody will be talking about the Super Bowl because they'd be in the NFC Championship game. But do you imagine if they went down there and just kind of ended Mike McCarthy, kept the narrative going on Dak, and, you know, the Eagles fans could go on social media and really just trash that fan base. That fan base could say whatever they want. It right. wouldn't matter. Like, you beat them in the playoffs when they were clearly better than you. Well, yeah, it's funny you say that, Jeff. Eagles fans, we you know we are built that way. You know what I mean? Uh, you knock out the Cowboys in the playoffs. Whatever happens after that is cherry on, is, is a cherry on top. Um, if you ask me, just based off everything that I've seen, read, watched on Sundays and Mondays, however you want to slice it, I, I, I honestly see a team that just lost faith in what they're being taught. They lost faith in the game plan. They lost faith in his coaching staff. I'm curious to know, you know, you're in the locker room. You talk to these players. Um, obviously, you can't say everything you hear, but as far as the, the vibe around Nick Sirianni and his coaching staff, what feeling do you get from these players um, when it comes to their leadership group, like the coaching staff in the front office, what feeling do you get from the players about how they feel about those guys? This is what I always say to myself as someone who does coach. And when times are tough, and right now I'm coaching a team where times are tough, you've got to keep the message clear. I don't think Nick Sirianni is getting that message across. Not like he's got to change up, but stick together. I don't like that. If I'm a player, I'm rolling my eyes. I, I think Nick Sirianni should honestly be a man with these guys and just go, what do you want out of me? What what do you guys want? What do you want out of a coaching staff? Quickly, Jeff, tell me why that doesn't work. Tell me why sticking together doesn't work. Tell me again, because you coach. Tell me why that why that why you wore your eyes when you hear that. If you lose four or five, do you really want to hear that? Like, oh, we gotta stick together and everything will be all right. Well, no, everything clearly isn't all right because you keep losing, and now you're losing the bad team. So, you know. And they know all their problems. They're escalating. The turnovers. Like, you think Jalen Hurts doesn't know how many interceptions he throws? You think he probably thought when he threw his Hail Mary in there, oh, there's another game. I got a turnover. It's, I know it doesn't mean anything, but it's still in the stat sheet. It's, you know, the, you know, A.J. Brown, he knows he got one target in the second half. He knows that. Uh, he knows he's not getting the ball deep. And I certainly am not helping him when I'm putting out on social media. Oh, by the way, he's only been targeted deep eight times in the last eight games. So, I mean, these guys see it. it they do. And it, it just boils up. So Nick's got to come to these guys. He's got to be a leader, too. And they ain't just Jalen. It ain't A.J. Brown. You got to go to these players and say, look, what is the problem? Seriously, what is the problem? How can we fix this as a coaching staff? Do, yeah, do you I think, think he's on the verge of losing his locker room? Or has he lost it already? I think he's on the verge. I don't think he's lost it yet because you got guys like, Jason Kelsey, Brandon Graham, Fletcher. By the way, I, I told people this. I think the D-line has been the most together unit. Like, they seem to have everything under control, even though, like, they're frustrated they're not getting sacks. They're frustrated about that stuff. Like, they're, they're tired and stuff. But I don't see, like, you know, Jordan Davis, like, quitting on things, like, or anything like that, or Jalen Carter giving up on stuff. Like, they're looking toward Brandon Graham. They're looking toward Fletcher Cox or that. And I think they're getting it. But the rest of the units, it's like, What's going on here? Like, I always thought the running back room was kind of weird from the beginning of the season. And I know they all get along, like Swift and Gainwell and stuff, but it just feels like, I don't know, it's just a different team from what I've seen or other locker rooms I've covered. Well, I, I want to get back to the D-line in a minute, Jeff. But in your estimation, considering he will have been to three playoffs and a Super Bowl in his three years here, should Nick be on the hot seat? Or in your estimation, is that crazy talk? I think he should be looking over his shoulder. And we've seen Jeffrey Lurie pretty much get rid of people for no – he fired Andy Reid, guys. Like, call call what you want. They were 4-12. and 12. He fired Andy Reid after two uh, non-winning seasons. He did. And Andy Reid's a top-five coach in this league ever. So he got rid of Chip Kelly just like that. He gave Chip the power and just said, okay, you're out. He fired a Super Bowl-winning coach at Doug Peterson for one bad year. Yeah, he can fire Nick Sariani if he feels like this is going against the wall. And I always joke about this. Like, you know, when, wherever your place of work is, do you ever have that feeling like you know someone well, but you have no idea what they do? You think the mm -hmm. Eagles think like that with Nick Sariani? That's interesting. That's, that's interesting food that. for thought. Yeah, <laughs> well, my whole thing is, Jeff, like, if you're not the emotional connector, clearly th there's disconnects all over the place, right? 
if you're not that guy and you're not calling the plays, you're not Sean McVay, right? You better be damn good at the connection thing or yes, else and, what's the use? And Jeff, and just to bounce off what Rob said, you know, you know, I watch a lot of these press conferences with these players, not just the Eagles, but I just watch the players across the league. And correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're around these guys a lot. You know, these players, they could care less about a guy being buddy, buddy or rah, rah. They, the only thing they care about is, can you make me better? Can you help me maximize my earned potential? Can you put me in positions to win? I mean, is that, is, am I off? Am I off in that theory? Because yes, like, like like Rob said, if the emotional connection part is starting to flee with this team between Nick Sirianni and the roster, what, what else does he have left to stand on? Yeah, I mean that's a good point, Tone. So I I also think part of the emotional connection happened too when Nick Sirianni decided to rub salt in the wounds of Kansas City Chiefs fans, which had no impact mm. on the football game whatsoever. Like, as much as fans want to admit it, they don't. Um, Kansas City Chiefs fans had nothing to do with the Philadelphia Eagles beating the Kansas City Chiefs in that Monday night game. And Nick Sirianni rubbing it in to them, I don't care how it looks. It's just, but if you're a player, you're like, you know, we're going to be feeling the heat from this. From, you know, other fan bases, on social media, everywhere. And... They're the ones who got to receive that blunt. Nick, Nick Sirianni can say, hey, you know, I, I'll put it on me. That's great. But you're also not the one, all, you, you know, say you're on You're AJ not Brown. the one who's got to pay the bills when you go after Exactly. The you're AJ Brown. You push that, men that mentions button on Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, and you see what people are saying about you, people who know nothing, that bothers you. Because I get it now, and it bothers me. You guys get it. It bothers you. I, I can't imagine what an NFL player goes through. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, let, let's look at let's look at the. I want to get to the offense in a minute, but let's look at the defensive side. <laughs> they go with the side, but they also have the weird move of having Patricia there, sort of just in case, right? Which to me is like setting Desai up for failure to begin with. And I'm not believe me, I'm not defending Desai. I don't think he did a good job, particularly. But it's been worse with Patricia. Jeff, it has. I mean, they're giving up more points per game. The second halves are disasters. Your edge rushers haven't gotten have zero sacks in the last three games. It's looked markedly worse than it did under Desai. What is happening on that side of the ball? They just don't have the personnel. I mean, let's let's just call a spade a spade. Um, they don't have any linebackers, and they really don't have any linebackers when Zach Cunningham's hurt. Or you know, it, remember they they just decided to let Christian Ellis go. I still can't figure that out. Um, you know, I, I, I feel bad for guys like Ben Van Sumer because the guy's going to be a good player. Like, he had a great heads-up play on the onside kick the other day. And that's what that's his role right now. He's a special teams guy. I, I think long-term, he could be a good player. But in 2023, 2024, no. He, they just don't have it. And look look at the secondary. Uh, Kevin Byard is not the same player. Uh, Reed Blankenship, I think he's solid, but I think – Maybe he was overvalued a bit. Uh, you know, Slay and Bradbury got a year older. Slay's still having a good year, by the way. They really do miss Slay. Uh, they, they, do. They, they miss him terribly. Uh, James Bradbury is better off in the slot at this point. He's just terrible on, on the boundary. Uh, Kaylee Ringo and Eli Ricks are nice, but you weren't depending on them to play significant roles this year. And give them credit, they played well, but yep. there's just no talent. It, it's, or there, I should say, there's talent, but the personnel just. Is it good? I mean, you could put Bill Belichick back there to coach that defense. It'll be a little better, but you need the talent, and they just let go too much of it. Well, Jeff, has this defense, you know, that begs the question, has this defense just become a bunch of names rather than, you know, a, a bunch of guys that actually produce? Feels like the 2011 defense does it when you had names and you had guys that put up stats, Jason Babin, Colin Jenkins, you know, like guys that were good on other teams and, you know, they were good here, but it wasn't working. You know, so that's what it feels like, honestly. Not not the Asawa, Dominique Rogers Camardi. Like it, it feels like that. Like there are names on yeah. this team, but they're not producing. So what do you do? You know, it's I mean, really I I still like in hindsight, I love Slay here, but you have to wonder if this front office pivoted or panicked when Slay said, Release me, get rid of me. Because mm. they weren't you know, you got to think about that for a second. And, you know, when C.J. Garner-Johnson, when I was told he was one of their top priorities and 
you know, they he didn't take the offer, so they, you know, they kind of did the big F you to him, you know, and he got a one year deal for significantly less somewhere else. It's that that was their guy. I, I think they were planning on Slay and CJ Gardner Johnson, and they were gonna yeah. fill the, the other cornerback up, you know, maybe early in the draft or something like that. But that's what I was told anyway, at, at least with CJ. So I think that screwed everything up. I know the TJ Edwards thing, it was Go see your offer in free agency. We'll get back to you. Well, I, I think he got an offer he couldn't refuse from his hometown team and took it. So, you know, the Eagles kind of fooled around on that one. So they, so they missed there. I thought they at least bring one of the two linebackers back. They didn't, which, again, was a concern. Um, Jalen Carr, you don't pass up, you know, in the draft. That, that, that's clear as day. So that was a good pick. But in hindsight, doesn't the Jordan yeah. Davis, Kyle yeah. Hamilton thing look like the missed – yeah, you know it's, it's funny. Are you kidding? It looks like a, it looks like a big swing and a miss. I, I, yeah, I said that day, like I don't care if you need a safety or not. You draft Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and he, it's he's so turned into one of the best. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know he's what a I monster. say every. He is. You know uh, what I say every year, Rob, as someone who covers the Ravens, I'll, you know, not not as much as I used to, but frequently, the NFL just lets good teams, good players, fall to the Ravens. They do every single year. There's a reason why the Ravens win as much as they do. Lamar, Kyle Hamilton, uh, you know, Adolfo Owe, you know, uh, you know, guys like that. Um, what's here? Uh, Tyra Linderbaum, the center. Uh, you know, right, they, right. they just let these players go. J.K. Dobbins was another one. He's not even playing. It's mm -hmm. they, they just, every single year they just let these. Zay Flowers is another one. They just let these players fall to Baltimore, and you wonder why Baltimore drafts so well. Yeah. Well, well, here, here's the thing, Jeff. You know, it's funny the Philadelphia Eagles that. They struggle at at certain positions. They struggle to draft linebackers. They struggle to draft safeties, corners. They struggle to make those investments matter. And when you let a guy, for example, TJ Edwards walk, a guy that maybe you didn't draft him, but you found him as an undrafted free agent on draft day or a day after draft day, what's the difference? What's the what's the real difference between a guy you drafted on day three versus a guy you signed on day four as an undrafted free agent? Right. I mean, what's the real difference in you know, they've struggled to find and develop linebackers in particular. And yeah. See, you, finally, sure. you, you, yeah. you find uh, one you, you, and, you, and you let them walk. So, 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 so come on. What, what are we doing here? Like, and so it begs the question, why, why go off the deep end for N'Kobe Dean as fans have been doing? And you know, they're not going to invest in them beyond the rookie contract. So, yeah, so. I, I'm a jerk when it comes to this tone. I agree with you. So. I'd be looking like, okay, man, I discovered T.J. Edwards. I'm going to pay him. You know, I discovered That's Jordan I'm Hicks. I'm going to pay him. By the way, Jordan Hicks is still good. Uh, you let him still walk. Good. Yeah, it's funny how the one time they won a Super Bowl, they had two decent linebackers. Yep. Funny how that works. And a, um, and a reliable running back room. Yeah, so it, will they ever change their philosophy, Jeff, is the question. You devalue certain positions to the point where it's ridiculous. I get you're not going to pay a linebacker what you're paying an edge rusher. I get it. Or even a D tackle, but the but the fact that they they went into the season banking completely on Nakobe Dean and a bunch of dudes, and now you're saying like, will this wake them up to this kind of stuff? I always joke that they read page nine of the media guy way too much. Fifth most wins since two thousand, and fourth best winning percentage since two thousand or whatever. Or, but you know, second most playoff. Well, I forget the exact set, but they read into that and they're like, oh man, we you know we 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 succeed. We succeed very well without linebackers, without safeties, uh, you know, paying running backs for only one year, which, by the way, is probably a smart move in, in high Yeah, I, the running back part I have no issue with, but. Yeah. yeah. Also, since, you know, I've been on a, I, everybody thinks I hate DeAndre Smith, but I actually don't. Um, I, I'm just realistic when it comes to guys like him. Yeah. He's not going to be back after this year because they, he, they set the, won't. they set the precedent. It, Unless he signs a one-year deal, by the way, the guy you let go wanted the one-year deal, and they said no. And it turns out they were right, but how much better would this team look with him and DeAndre Swift? Think about that. Uh, it's a great point. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's a great point. Um, I, You know, Jeff, how much – let's just dig in a little bit more. The people they elected to let walk, the people that they brought in here, just sort of – and this, a lot more of this falls on the defensive side. I get it. But how much should Howie wear this, man? Because this has been a, a a swift fall here, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, well, Howie, yeah, but Howie deserves the benefit of the doubt because he can fix. Here's Howie Roseman's problem. He can't sustain the success he builds. 
Like mm. it, it, it's always ups and flows, right? It goes really high, and yep. then it's like okay, and then it goes down, and then it goes really high again. Like mm -hmm. it's like the stock market. <laughs> it's, why do you I, think that is with him, though, Kerr? Like, like, like why, why do you think uh, he struggles to sustain success? What is that? I think he gets married to certain players, certain philosophies, certain tendencies, like you know, like the whole linebacker thing. Oh, you know, we don't need. Jordan Hicks, Michael Kendricks, we'll go in, you know, with – who was the – I don't even remember who their linebackers were in 2018 anymore. That, that's a, a, see, that's how bad they were. You know, yeah. it's a, it's that type of thing. So, uh, again, like, T.J. Edwards, like, remember, like, when T.J. Edwards and Alex Singleton were back there, Alex Singleton actually became a pretty good player. Yeah, too. tackling machine. Yeah, yeah. They plays in Denver, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, they could they could have used a tackling machine like Alex Singleton for all his faults right now. Um, but, again, it's – you know, it's their philosophy. They just don't care about the running back position. They don't care about linebackers. Uh, they care about building up front on the offensive and defensive line, which, by the way, hasn't been as good as in years past. So that's an issue. And I, I honestly think that might be the reason why this team has fallen like it is, because the one thing they could always rely on was their offensive line just being swiftly dominant, no pun intended, and their defensive line just getting to the quarterback and getting sacks and, they're not doing either. And now everything else is getting exposed and Jalen Hurts is trying to do too much and the secondary is trying to do too much and the back seven is trying to do too much. It, it, it's just they need to get their offensive and defensive line back together. That's what they need. They need them to be the, the best cohesive unit in football. All right, let's go there with the D-line. Um, the one thing they did do well throughout the first 10 weeks was stop the run. They were the best team in football, 66 yards per game on the ground. Since then, Jeff, uh, they are 30th. They went from allowing 66 to a buck 50 on the ground. How do you explain that? Injuries, um, personnel, guys getting tired. I mean, look, during that same stretch, Jalen Carter has seven pressures. Jordan Davis has five pressures. It's they're, they're not as efficient as they were early in the year. Fletcher Cox is actually still on the same pace, but he's also in his 30s. Um, you know, Milton Williams hasn't been playing as much. Uh, they're not getting any anything from their edge rushers right now at all. You know, we knew Hassan Reddick wasn't a great run stopper, but he's not getting to the quarterback as frequent. Josh Wetch kind of hit a wall. Um, they don't have any depth behind him outside Brandon Graham. And again, he's 35. And look at the linebacker situation. It's it's just they're all turnstiles right now, you know. Maybe the Kobe Dean getting hurt was a problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it definitely affected the depth for sure. Um, Jeff, before we get you out of here, I, I definitely want to pick your brain about Jalen Hurts a little bit. Um, you know, when you look at his stats at face value, you say, okay, he's um, career year in touchdowns, um, career year. He's going to have a career year in passing yards, um, career year as far as attempts. You know, he's throwing the ball more. Um, he's completing the same he, – he, he has the same completion percentage as last year, around 66%. But then you get to the turnovers, and that's the blemish on his production. I'm curious to know how much blame do we place on Jalen Hurts and how much blame do we place on this offensive coaching staff for Jalen Hurts' um, pseudo-regression? I, I think early in the year, Jalen Hurts is making throws Jalen Hurts doesn't make. Yeah, I, I don't know if he was trying to overcompensate for something. I mean, I'll, there are a lot of turnovers that are on Jalen. I mean, but that was what made him elite last year. It wasn't the passing yards, the total touchdowns, any of that. It's the fact he wasn't turning the ball over. Everybody called him like the anti Josh Allen. Now him and Josh Allen are pretty much the same player. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they're exciting. They're fun to watch. They put up the numbers. They win games, but they also turn the ball over a lot. And you just learn to live with it. I, I think as this city has to learn to live with Jalen Hurts' turnovers, they're going to happen. It, it doesn't seem like it, he's going to have a year like 2022 again. But I don't think he's going to have a year like this one again either, where he throws 14 interceptions or whatever he's got. I, I think it's going to be in the middle. And But I do think it's – early in the year, I think he was trying to force-feed the ball a little too much. And then he started thinking about his turnovers a bit. But then he started fumbling a lot. And then, you know, everything just kind of snowballs. And I, I just think he's trying to do too much. I don't think they get the ball across the middle to their two playmakers too much. Like, again, like – we, we have different 
um, areas of concern or complaints about this team. Remember when it was, oh, you're giving the ball to Brown, Smith, and Goddard too much. Why don't we give the ball to Quez, Quez Watkins? I don't know why. Why don't we give the ball to Julio Jones? Why don't we give the ball to Grant Calcaterra? Again, don't know why. But why don't we spread the ball out more? And now it's why don't the big guys don't get the ball? You know, you have to pick. It, I, I seriously do think this coaching staff listens to, to way too many people. Mm. Well, I, let's stay on that. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call Matt Patricia the DC, even though Desai is still he's, the DC. He's the DC. Okay. So, do we have two new coordinators next year? In your estimation, if Nick survives, do we have two new coordinators? In your estimation, is Brian Johnson also going to be out? I think we have one. Uh, I definitely think they're going to overhaul the defense. I okay. mean, it, it's a given. I mean, everything. Since week eight is 30th, 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 31st, 31st, 32nd. Yep. Like, you're going to change everything up. So, I, I definitely expect that there's changes on the defensive side of the ball. How much are you going to piss off Jalen Hurts if you got to have that heart-to-heart with him about Brian Johnson? Can you worry about that, man? Can you worry about I, I wouldn't. I, mean, like, I, I wouldn't. Like Brian actually, Johnson's not the guy? I, I'd actually sit in that room and tell him like a man, hey, guess what? This guy ain't helping you right now. You know, I don't know. What do you yeah. want me to do? This guy ain't helping you. This guy ain't Shane Steichen. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. You tell me. You know, it's we have the tape. We have the evidence here. This is the yeah. direction we're thinking of going. We yeah, just you're want right. you to notice. And then think about what Carson Wentz, when John Filippo left the building and Frank Reich, there was a certain level of accountability that left with Carson Wentz, right? I mean, John Filippo was a hard ass on him. Frank Reich, same thing. He was. So, I mean, yeah, Jalen, Brian Johnson may be comfort food, but is it good for you? You know what I mean? It, 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 it's starting to look like empty calories. Yeah, yeah. it's – I always said – and, Rob, I, I'm sure you're aware of this too in the media. I, I do like when people say good things about you, but I rather hear the negative stuff sometimes, like the, constru- the constructive criticism. How mm-hmm. much is Brian Johnson giving that to him? I'll give you an example, Jeff, just speaking of that. So – when for years and doing sports talk radio, one of the things that, and you should do this on TV too. And I don't know that enough people do it, but we would air check. So we would sit down and we, I would with my boss and we would listen to, to the show and he'd say, all right, this, this worked. What, what are you trying to get at here? It felt like it was a little too meandering. You didn't get to the point quick enough or, you know, whatever. And, and it's hard to listen to your and have somebody critique what you're doing, right? It's very hard. You get defensive. You, I did. I, I had my reasoning, whatever. But at the end, as hard as it is, it gets you better, right? It gets you better. Yeah. And it gives you, you, you know, hey, follow the camera over here. Do this, do that. If it's TV, whatever. Or you weren't prepared enough for this segment. Um, and it's a hard thing to do, but it's, a, it's something that's necessary. And I think that you're right. I think if you have reached the point as an organization, you feel like Brian Johnson's not the answer. It's, it's very simple. It's the day after the season ends, you bring Jalen and say, look, we're making it. We're making a change. We want to be up front with you. This is the reason why we're doing it. We understand your relationship. That can't like that can't be a determining factor for me that they're buds. I'm sorry. It can't. You, this is the professional level. Now you got to make a change if you feel like he's not the guy. And if Jalen's the guy, I know he is. And I think he is. I don't think Jalen's ultimately going to care. I think Jalen cares about winning football games. And if that yeah. helps Jalen Hurts win football games, I think he's on board with it. Like, it, it just seems to me how he's built. You know, it's the whole built by Bama thing, right? Uh, you know, yeah. that's that's yeah. pretty much it. I mean, Nick Saban has got rid of I mean, you don't coaches. think Saban did those kind of things? He's always done right. Them. Saban right. did those kind of things all yeah. the time. Yeah. And, and, by, and by the way, I, this is where I do defend Brian Johnson and Jalen Hurts. Remember, Shane Steichen has been the only, the only – coordinator Jalen Hurts has had the only coordinator and play caller Jalen Hurts has had for two years in a row since his junior year of high school. Think about yep. that. Yeah. It's a big and, deal. And Jeff, if I, if I can sneak one last thing in on you, um, I want to, I want to know your thoughts on this notion. You have a Super Bowl caliber team, a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, you know, top to bottom. You were just in a Super Bowl. You lost about three points. You're ready. You're, you're ready for a, a, a return to the promised land and, you know, to leave with the big trophy. And you go out and you hire two guys that don't really have the experience on this level, right? What's your what, what's your thought process in terms of experience with hiring experience when you have a Super Bowl roster versus hiring um, young guys when you have a Super Bowl roster? I mean, 
do you think the Philadelphia Eagles made a mistake and overvalued Brian Johnson and Sean Desai and didn't really take too much, didn't take care of their Super Bowl roster enough in terms of the coaching staff? You know, there's one guy I would love to talk to in NFL circles. Like, I, I, I don't know if his health's good or not, or I wish he was better on TV, but that was George Seifert because he lost both his coordinators. He lost Ray Rhodes to the Eagles, and he lost Mike Shanahan to Denver. And the 40, the 95 49ers were a Super Bowl team, but they were 12 and 4, and everything just seemed off on the offensive, defensive side of the ball, and they got bounced in the playoffs for it. So that would be someone that, and I think he went with, I'm trying to remember, did he go with Mariucci, Rob? Do you remember? Who he went with? Mariucci, where he 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 left and went to Detroit. No, no, I mean, do you remember? Like, was Mariucci the offensive coordinator when he got promoted? I, I'm trying to remember. Like, he was on the coaching staff. I think he was Seifert's uh, OC. Yeah, Shanahan was already gone. Yeah, and I think Mariucci replaced him. I think uh, you're I'm, right. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to remember who was the defensive coach at the time. But uh, anyway, um, but yeah, they went with relatively inexperienced guys you know, at, to replace those guys. Yeah. And it, it, they won games, but it didn't work. It's, I think the Eagles thought Sean Desai's experience as a defensive coordinator was going to help. Mm-hmm. And instead of going with two young guys in Denard Wilson and Brian Johnson, I think they said, whoa, 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 I, I don't know we you can do this, even though the players like Denard Wilson. So, But you're seeing what Denard Wilson has done in Baltimore. And Remember, they interviewed uh, Michigan's defensive coordinator, uh, Jesse who, Minner, for some. Yeah, who's been incredible. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, maybe he's the guy. Like, everybody wants Mike McDonald's scheme or what Mike McDonald's doing. Um, you know, and Mike McDonald has the players, too, but Mike McDonald's a really good young defensive mind. So, you know, maybe that's it. Um, but I think they should have hired a veteran on the offensive side of the ball. I want to be quite out. No disrespect to Brian Johnson, but mm. I, I said Nick hit it out of the park for Shane Steichen because, you know, I got the receipts from Justin Herbert to tell me so. So, um, so I, I thought they should have went with veteran on that side and maybe tried to sigh on the and, and then it's like okay it doesn't work we'll, we'll move on there but I, I I just think the the veteran guy they went the wrong way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeff. Uh, and you and let everybody know you can follow Jeff at Jeff Kerr CBS on Twitter slash X and of course check out his work his great work at CBS Sports. Dot com. What do we have coming out next? What can the people be on the alert for from you, Jeff? Well, for nationally. Um, I'm actually doing all the records that can be broken for week 18, like Puka Nakua is about to set like the, the, the receiving yards record. Uh, CJ Stroud needs actually 529 passing yards to break Andrew Luck's rookie record, which hmm. you know, it can happen. That'd be, a, that'd be a hell of a day if he did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, he might need to do that to beat yeah. the Colts. So, you know. <laughs> he could have easily it's, broke it if he didn't miss a game, though. If he yeah, missed yeah, miss two games. Game. Two yeah, games. Yeah, two yeah. Games. Can you imagine? Jeez. Yeah, he actually has the rookie passing yards per game record, so he's got that. In, okay. In okay. Cool, cool. But yeah, there, there's a couple other ones like AJ Brown's close to beating his rookie record. Uh, Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen are actually tied for the most rushing touchdowns in the season, so mm-hmm. for a by a quarterback. So that that's up. So yeah, that that's for CBS. Uh, for CBS Philly. I'll do my five, um, you know, concerns questions for. That'll be on cbsphilly.com and, you know, right. obviously the Hill on Sunday kickoff this week. If I can get to the stadium, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> All right, Jeff, listen, man. Oh, yeah, we're just at some some weather uh, coming up this weekend. So that, and a thing called snow. We're not that familiar with it. Yeah, anymore. yeah. D- d- don't play your starters, Nick. If it snows, don't play them. Oh, my God, man. Can you imagine that turf with, with snow on top of it? Also? Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, you know what? I, I'd be like to Marcus Mariota, Tara McKee. Go ahead, boys. Get ready. Yeah. Get ready, fellas. Uh, all right, Jeff, listen, man. Appreciate a couple minutes as always. Thank you for your time. Yep, sounds great. Thanks Thank you, Jeff. Me, guys. All right, you got it. That is Jeff Carr. Let's get a quickie in tone. And when we come back, we'll continue the Eagles discussion. And we're going to look at good, bad, and quiet. Guys mm. who have been good this year, guys who have been bad this year, and guys who have certainly been quiet of late. So we'll dive into that. 1230. Keith Pompey will join us. We'll talk some Sixers with Keith. We'll do our usual NFL stuff coming up at uh, at 1 o'clock. We've got a lot in store for you, so don't go anywhere. He is Tony to Shields. I am Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take. All right, let's talk about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because knowing who to trust with your finances is imperative, right? But it can also be scary. you got to find that right person, and I did, and I want you to as well. Um Jim is somebody, and absolutely, Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group are, are, are someone that I absolutely trust my finances with, whether it's retirement planning for you, 401k review, insurance review, you might have a small business and you need help with your employee benefits. That's an re- another resource that Jim can help you with. I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be too. Give him a call, 610-996-4751, 610 610- 
996-4751. You can also email him as well, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray, 